So I thought I'd start with something exotic. Buried down in here is a pepino, which might look to you like an eggplant. And it's related to the eggplant. It's related to tomatoes, potatoes, and nightshades. But it's a fruit. It tastes like a cantaloupe when it ripens. And it's um, one of many um, things that we got here from the Incas. The Inca Indians were just uh, brilliant. We moved here in 1992, so it's been a while. And we were very slow about deciding what we wanted to do with the property. We didn't make any changes for the first year. And later we learned that was a good thing to do, to just kind of watch and see, because we would find where we thought a place was empty, we'd see bulbs pop up. Many people today are looking for a big house on a little piece of land, and we were exactly the opposite. We wanted a little comfortable cottagey house with a little bit of land. And it's not a big property, it's only a third of an acre. But for us, of course, compared to what we had in LA, it was just huge. And everybody's astonished at how many plants we've actually got on this size, just a suburban lot. So we have the patio framed by an apricot tree on one side and a uh, peach tree that still has a few last peaches on it on the other side. And then we have grapes growing up this arbor, and um, it's kind of fun when the fruit's in on the patio, we can just come out. We had two ideas. One was that we wanted something that was sort of like English cottage garden, and the other is that we wanted to have a lot of fruit trees and grow a lot of fruit. There's a baby um, passion fruit that we're gonna grow up the vine. So a um, couple years, it'll we'll grow the vine up the um, this arbor here, in a couple years, we'll have lots and lots of um, um, passion fruit, and we'll probably put some roses on it. Behind it's an apple tree. Um, it's, a, it's a cutting from the big one right next to it. We like the big one. It's called a pettengill so much that we um, put another little baby in so we'd have more. And this year, we're getting more apples off this tree than we've ever seen. As Linda said, we edged our way into it very slowly started putting in trees ones and twos and pretty soon after a few years we put in eight or nine in the winter until we got to where we are now where we're going over 80 and then this winter we'll put about another eight in and that'll bring us close to 90 and we keep saying well that's all we can fit but somehow we find room for one or two more. Over here are two of our um, favorite plum trees we have one more in the front yard this is called a Satsuma plum and I thought I'd pick some let you let you try them, Jill. This is a um, very different kind of plum. It's a sat satsuma. It's plum? called a satsuma plum, not to be confused with a satsuma tangerine. I'll cut one open because they look quite unusual. There is, as Linda said before, they're a very meaty plum. I think they're very pretty to look at. Have you noticed an increase in wildlife since you've done this? Yes, and also insects, a lot more beneficial insects. And we try and plant a lot of flowering things in and around mm -hmm. the, the fruit trees and the food things because that brings in the good bugs that eat the bad bugs. Mm -hmm. We don't even use organically approved pesticides. Um, we, nothing really ever touches anything in the garden. The, the great secret is perennial plants, trees and bushes are much easier to to maintain and grow and lead a lot less care than annual vegetables. Here's a young apple I always love to show off. Um, this is called white winter pearmaine and a lot of people think it's a English tree that dates from 1250 AD, actually the oldest known English apple. And um, if it is, that's quite extraordinary and it grows here, you know, because this is not kind of apple country. You, this is not what you would think of as apple country, but we have quite a few apples. Most of our mature fruit trees go through the whole Santa Barbara summer where it's pretty dry here without being watered. That's they get enough in the winter because we're doing a lot of passive water catching in the uh, soil by all the mulch and compost. It's, it's just holding a lot more water in and they make it through the summer. This is the first of our two uh, bananas that we just put in, a little baby, and it's right next to a um, Tangella, a little baby Tangella, just starting to grow up. So we've just got stuff crammed in all over the place. Planting a tree turns out to be pretty easy. Once you know where to get good trees and the right kind of 
grow for your area, you just dig a hole and you, most of the trees come what are called bare root. You buy them in the winter. There's no leaves on them. They're deciduous trees. You put them in the hole. You fill it up carefully with earth, pat it down, and you planted a tree. And a, a fruit tree costs maybe anywhere. We first started buying them, they were 16, and now it, most of them are rarely over $24. And within a few years, they've, the first time they yield a good crop, which is usually in less than five years, they've paid for themselves. And after that, they're pure profit. Um, we have another pink lady apple, and it's right next to a blood orange. We sort of thought we were making a mistake planting them too close together, but they're really doing fine. They don't mind each other at all. And we had our first crop of what are called apriums, and this is a brand new introduction. It's uh, about three quarters apricot and one quarter plum, crossbred by a very dedicated man who's sort of a modern Luther Burbank, who spent probably 10, 15 years crossbreeding uh, plums and apricots to get this, and they were absolutely delicious. And then that's right next to pomegranates. And lo and behold, the news is full of information now on the super antioxidant qualities of pomegranates. So what we've done every year, we have a little project where we shrink the lawn even more and more and more. I thought we'd shrunk it to the point where it couldn't shrink anymore but I just finished taking out another little piece of it. This is our lawn, it looks really <laughs> terrible at this time of year, but it's meant to. It's the end of July in a Mediterranean climate in Southern California. We have no right to be pouring water on a lawn. So August and September, it goes dormant. And then as it starts cooling in October, it starts perking up again. And as the winter rains come, it gets green and nice. And we have, you know, X months of a green lawn, depending on how much rain there is. And that's it, you know, we're not gonna, I think it's really wrong in this climate unless grasses are developed that really will stay green naturally in this kind of um, climate zone to baby these things with a lot of water. It's too precious a resource. And people also forget that water, it takes a lot of fossil fuel energy to bring us our water because there's big pumping stations pumping that water, burning up fossil fuel. So I think we ethically should be very careful how we use our water. What we do use should be going for food and um, not so much for um, wands. Now what advice would you give to someone who's interested in maybe beginning this path toward growing some of their own food? I'd say read Toby, Toby Hemingway's book, Gaia's Garden, and just get an idea of what you could grow in a small space and start with something easy, like Larry was describing. Just put in one fruit tree that likes your area, so it's not a big adventure. It's just something you know you're going to be happy with and that you'll actually eat. And just start from there. And the only other thing I would add to that is don't go to the big um, box stores where they have nurseries attached and buy your trees there. Find, you know, find people in your community that know about growing fruit trees find out what they're growing, where they bought them. Um, there's always good wholesale growers in an area that are pr growing quality trees for home gardeners. There's always people that are knowledgeable, so check it all out. Ag departments at universities often can give people whole lists mm -hmm. of um, appropriate trees for their area.